this is round turn three. End of turn three. Um, he's killed my general. Uh, the Thicket Beast has got into the Wing Reaper, it's going to kill everything. A lonely Sphinx over here, a lonely Sphinx over here. Uh, Patrick, how do you feel about this game? Uh, give and take. I killed a general, so I'm fine. With four Wild Riders. Okay. Excellent. Right. Okay, so things have just gone south really quickly for Patrick. Uh, Patrick, do you want to say what happened? He killed my general. So, Divine Management, boom. Stalkers, boom. We must have to say, Patrick let me... I forgot about my stalkers and Patrick let me have them, so he's definitely getting up on sportsmanship. <laughs> um, Kestrel Knights died to uh, 18 shots, strength free shooting. And uh, that's it, yeah. Craig from Spotty Dog Wargaming. How's it going, Craig? Not good. <laughs> you are the inferior YouTuber. <laughs> this is for Dirty Infernal Dwarfs player. Are you winning? Of course I am. Skill of course mode. he Skill is. Mode. Skill, it's not the army. How do you feel to play Infernal Dwarfs? Um, they are tough. Can I ask you? And when they, when they cast them in the corner, it was, uh, it was kind of disappointing. It's a very tough game. Are they broken? I wouldn't say broken, just very strong. <laughs> so, I lost my first game 37. Uh, second game is going to be against Ogres. Uh, he's got Merc Vets, he's got a Pestilence Giant, he's got all this goody stuff. So, uh, let's see how it goes. <laughs> so, Dan, tell us what just happened. Yeah, um, this guy got his spell off with a miscast, and we're about to dump a big template on the unit, and he's gone in the void. YOLO! <laughs> So uh, what's happened here is Dan has only ever put what done six wounds to this unit with uh, approximately fifty attacks. Yeah. Um, and then he's brought one back. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the hits for the stalkers against the uh, merc vets. And uh, and look at how surrounded I am. It's going terribly. <laughs> okay. I apologise. This this is not skill. This is just all luck. <laughs> Wizard ran into the front of the thickest oh, right. So victory for the uh, victory for the Undying Dynasties here. We did well, we did well. Uh, Dan's dice were against him, weren't they, Dan? Yeah, but I've got a giant left on one wound. Hey, one wound. <laughs> Go giant. Stalkers couldn't do the job. Good game. So just played Infernal Dwarves. Uh, 12 8, so I'm happy with that because they're, they're pretty brutal. Um, was outplayed though. Oh, Everything died apart from these guys who took the objective. 110 points, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> where does everyone think they're finished? Last. Uh, yeah, third bottom, probably. Fourth. No, second bottom, then. Well, you well, me. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do too badly, actually. So, uh, no, you'll be the top bottom. Where do you think you finished? Um, How did you your last game? I just played Infernal Dwarves and got 12 8. As in, I got 8 and got 12, so that's not too bad. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's good. That's pretty good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. No, you, you crushed it with it. You'll be second in spot. You're done, aren't you? Patrick's top dog. Um, no, dog. Pell. Pell beat me. Did he? He got 27, I got 24. Oh, if I'd made no. that reform in the first game, it would have been 27. It's always just one reform. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just made that one reform. In my game, it was as well. <laughs> Good day though. Good, good day. day. Yeah, yeah good day. Good day. And we'll do it again. See everyone. There's Patrick. <laughs> Patrick. Oh, Smile. Look at him. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Top dog. Top dog. Top dog. <laughs> Top dog. Patrick. <laughs> <laughs>Flying Circus, I guess. Well, he had the three flyers, the Double Dragon List, um, and the Knights of Rhymer. Um, very competent player. He's actually a play tester, so um, he knows his stuff. Um, he fought, he got two really big wins in the first two games and then catapulted onto table one against the Orcs and Goblins player, Dan Minto, who came third. Um, and um, yeah, very interesting matchup because actually the Orcs and Goblins player had a lot, he's got goblins big blocks of goblins which are great counters to the dragons because you can bog them down and just you know keep them on steadfast so um it was actually touch and go for quite a while I and mean, then just towards the end pete got some some luck and um yeah dice went his way and then uh, he managed to pick off some heavy points with um getting the gargantula and getting some some key characters um 
out of the unit. So um, that clinched him top spot. Uh, Marshall Trial came second with his Vermin Swarm. Again, I think I predicted him for um, top five. Um, and then Aaron Pullen just missed out with the sixth place, <laughs> which would have been nice to have him in the top five because then he would have had a 50% pass rate for, for predictions for top five. But it doesn't matter. Um, it's good to see Kingdom of Equintain up there. Uh, I believe Luke Williams, I didn't really see many of his games, so he's a good player. Um, I spoke to Tim Ross quite a lot. That's the Silver Nails player who had... Um, the MSU style um, Silver Nails, lots of small units. Um, he had the Lord on the Stag. Um, again, good player, clever player, knew how to use to use the, the MSU style of the Silver Nails. So, I mean, what's great to see is you know that twenty five percent percentile of, of players is that all the list, all the armies are different. So there's not you know repeat of armies. You, you can't really say you know back back in eight how it's like Dark Elves, Dark Elves and um, who else were really good and what high elves were always up there and you know certain armies you'd always you know expect to see two or three in the top five whereas here um, you know any of those could really shift positions as well because apart from Pete who really did run away with it um, with a really good points total of 59 um, from Dan Minto to me there's only really six points in it so all it takes is for <laughs> any of those to pick up a couple of points and someone lose a couple of points and then all those positions change so um which is invariably what happens you know in the top sort of areas or just generally in tournaments that you, you could take you know especially a 60 man tournament you could take 10 places and see that there's probably only six points in it between it but it shows you um you know i think it shows you how unbalanced the game is at the moment which is great to see um, and yeah, it's just a really good fun tournament, as you can see from the. I um, hope you hope you enjoyed the the log. Um, I'll probably be doing them again for tournaments, just because to record the games is quite strenuous. But I'm certainly will try and record some games because I think it's better to have a battle report so people can see exactly what's what's going on in those. But yeah, fantastic fun tournament. Um, I'd recommend anyone going to the next one, which I'm hoping they're doing soon. Um, yeah. So how do I think my list performed? To be fair, I was really quite pleased with the list. Um, I really enjoyed playing with the three cats um, because they're just a, well, to be fair, they're either a nightmare to get rid of or people get lucky and just absolutely destroy them. Um, the one thing I really missed was an architect, that five at regen just would have been so helpful on those ring reapers or on one of the sphinxes at one point. Um, the mobile caster was key to the list. Um, having a stationary one just doesn't work you need to keep them close the biggest weakness of it is if you can take out the general then you lose the mobility if you lose the mobility you lose the choice to pick your fights if you can't pick your fights and get your combo charges with the sphinxes and your general and the wind reapers then you you're not going to do well um so you know seventh's good i would have liked top five personally i mean um certainly the first game and even the last game could have done better the first game leaders of my general just meant that i wasn't maneuverable enough and i was then battling to to fight back and and get the 13-7 basically a draw really um the last game i know a joke about infernal doors being <laughs> broken but they're not broken it's just that i think not i i've never played against them before i've read the book but not in depth and so you just get to learn um their weaknesses and strengths obviously it's just experience um, you know for example the disciples of Yulug are, are unbreakable um, and I forget that and then you do a move and you think and then they go oh they're unbreakable and you go wish I'd thought of that before I did what I did um, but it's a learning curve and it's good um, it was nice that I also got um, voted best sports I don't know if you can see from the vlog but all my opponents we were having so much like loads of fun especially uh, my second opponent who was just having the, the worst luck and then everything I was doing was just, just paying off and certainly if we go back to the list review the magic phases can be so strong for this especially Ancient Glory oh what a spell like just pop out because the cast is mobile you can generally keep those you know the, the three cats and and the winged reapers close by and um, you bubble that and they all heal a wound back and also you bump them up to like strength six 
um, weapon skill five and, and plus another initiative so it makes them really deadly and um, it's always I always think if you're going to take a magic phase you need to have a magic phase where you have at least two spells the opponent wants to stop so that means that in any sort of situation where they haven't got a scroll then two important spells you're going to get one through and if you're going to get one through it makes a difference and certainly in that ogres game it made the difference because i always had a spell he wanted to stop and a, another spell he wanted to stop but he could only stop one of them because he lost a scroll early on so you've got to choose your poison basically um yeah apart from that i would drop the cataphracts take some more sepulchral stalkers because they're incredibly useful um just for the underground ambush but also when the ambush they can actually do something and against so you know monsters they're fantastic anything with a com combined profile so dragons good counter to um good counter to even war machines because you're probably going to roll three sixes and then that's that gone so really good um yeah i enjoyed the list unfortunately i'm going to shelve the, the undying dynasties from now on i'm going to um be taking out some warriors and see giving them a go to see how I can make them work, um, which will be interesting to say the least. Um, in terms of upcoming news, I'm hoping to get more battle reports on the channel, but unfortunately it's, it's proving quite um, a turmoil, I guess is, is a good word to use, um, to get some games at the moment. Um, in other news, we all know version 1.2 is coming as well, so I guess it's not so bad if I am getting battle reports out because of people you know, generally don't want to see the old rules, they want to see the new rules in action. So um, really looking forward to, to those drop in. Um, and I know the community is as well, because um, we're all excited to see what changes have got in store for us. Um, on a key note, um, you should really look out for the content team. So um, basically, we're hoping that we'll get the rules a couple hours earlier. Just, um, they won't be, we won't be releasing them a couple of hours earlier, but it'll just give us some time to get some content up. So some tacticas, um, people are doing blogs on on the you know the rule book on the new magic pass on the new army books. So basically, as soon as the rules the release the rules get released officially, then we've got a run and start with all that, and you can look at what you know some of the more astute players think of them. So I I will be putting my opinions in, but I don't think I'm um, you know the best player in the world. But certainly people like once bitten because you know he knows this stuff and people like Rafaza I always think if you check out his blog it's really really good read um, because he always you know he's posted up um, I think his last one was a hilarious beast herdly list with like 10 chariots or something hilarious like that but when you actually read it you're like hmm, that actually could work so um, yeah keep your eye out for that um, certainly not just for rules release which is coming but all the, all the other stuff that, that will come with that from the content team um, because Lord Tremendous at the moment is, is head of content team and he's, he's doing a really good job and, and um, yeah, it's fantastic to, to be part of that. So um, yeah, that's it. So hopefully I'll be getting some more content soon. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Um, and as always, if you've got any comments or any questions, just drop them down below and we'll see you for the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.